Good morning. How are you? Yeah. <laughs> did you enjoy the Olympics? I did. Oh, they were in France? Yes, I know. Yeah. <laughs> you apparently enjoyed that. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> French is so French. Yes, it is. <laughs> Like a blessing, you can come. 
come up and cross your arms, that's fine as well, whatever you're comfortable with. Um, what you'll do is we normally start with this side and we'll have ushers who will help with telling you what to do. But you can, you'll come up, grab a small glass from there and we'll line up on the altar rail. You can either kneel or stand, whichever is more comfortable for you. And once you're done receiving communion, you'll circle back by the side aisles and you'll notice that on either side there are these handy dandy empty cup holders. You can just put your cup there and then head back into your pews. We do have grape juice and gluten-free wafers, so if that's something you need, just let me or Mark know, and we will make sure we get that for you. Um, all right. Thank you to everyone who gave for Erie Gives this week. Um, we received $2,300 before we actually find out the amount that we're um, added in from the foundation. So thank you all for giving. This was our first year trying it out, and we really appreciate it. So you'll be hearing more about that in the newsletter and bulletins, but thank you. We really, really appreciate it. We also, because school is starting very soon, um, sorry to all the teachers who are emotionally preparing for that, um, we're going to have blessing of the backpacks next week, and we also will be blessing teachers and others who work in the school. So bring backpacks if you're a kiddo. We'll make sure we do a blessing for, for the school year. Also, the fall means that we're starting up our fall schedule. So adult Sunday school is going to begin on September 8th at 6, oh, not 6.30 in the morning. Just kidding. 8.30. No one is here at 6.30. Uh, 8.30 in the morning. We're also going to have kids Sunday school. I think we're leaning towards the first and the third Sundays. We're still figuring it out. If you aren't part of that conversation and would like to be, I know we have Elena and Carrie and Irene and um, Lisa and Maurice and I are in that conversation um, about planning that out. If you feel like you should be a part of that conversation, feel free to let me know and we'll make sure we keep you up to date. So, but we'll, we'll let you know the plans as soon as we have them. For Mount Calvary Council, we are meeting with Lamb of God's Council this Tuesday. Uh -oh. You're standing. <laughs> oh, is everything? I didn't mean to call you out. I thought you had like a really important announcement. Okay, sorry. Um, um, we're meeting with Lamb of God on Tuesday at 6 o'clock here. So Lamb of God's Council's coming over. We're doing some, we're picking Christmas Eve times and all of that. So um, please plan to make it for Council so we can plan all of that out. And is Dean not here today? I was going to embarrass him. If you see Dean, he turns 82 today. And if he comes in late, we're just going to stop and sing to him. So I'm sure he'd love it. But uh, he might be avoiding coming today just because he knows I will sing to him. Uh, are there any other announcements before we begin today? All right. If not, we'll begin with our prelude.
Please stand as you are able for confession and forgiveness. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Baptized into Christ, let us confess our sin. Merciful God, you free us to love others, but that we may act our neighbors and follow our own way. You lead us by the Spirit of joy and peace, but we turn away from the abundant life you are. You surround us with patience and kindness and generosity, but we grow weary in doing what is right. In your mercy, forgive us. Do not give up on us. Heal us, break, break our bonds, and, and show us the path of life. Amen. Amen. You belong to Christ Jesus, and you are God's children through faith. In the cross of Christ and through the power of the Holy Spirit, your sins are forgiven. Clothed with Christ, you are a new creation. Amen. Amen. We'll now turn in our red hymnals to hymn number 488. Um.
and also with you. from the book of Proverbs. Wisdom has built her house. She has hewn her seven pillars. She has slaughtered her animals. She has mixed her wine. She has also set her table. She has sent out her servant girls. She calls from the highest places in the town. You that are simple, turn in here. To those without sense, she says, come, eat of my bread and drink of the wine I have mixed. Lay aside immaturity and live and walk in the way of insight. The word of the Lord. Thank, Thank you, Lord. God. We read the song responsibly. Fear the Lord, you that are his saints, for those who fear him lack nothing. Beyond lions lack and suffer hunger, 
but those who seek the Lord and let him not make them good. Come, children, and listen to me. I will teach you the fear of the Lord. Who among you can not and desire his long life to enjoy the prosperity? Keep your tongue from evil speaking and your lips from lying words. Turn from evil and do good. Seek peace and forgiveness. And the second reading comes from the book of Ephesians, the fifth chapter. Be careful then how you live, not as unwise people, but as wise, making the most of the time, because the days are evil. So do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. Do not get drunk with wine, for that is debauchery, but be filled with the Spirit. As you sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs among yourselves, singing and making melody to the Lord in your hearts, giving thanks to God the Father at all times and for everything, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. discomfort in those who are hearing it. 
First of all, we'll hear next week in our last part of John chapter 6, how some will fall away because this teaching is just too hard for them. And even the disciples seem a little bit uncomfortable with what's being said. Now, for those of us present-day Christians who know how this story ends, who knows what Christ is alluding to, we might skip over this discomfort and move right on to thinking about communion. We might move forward to the rituals that we do and um, have each week. But I guess I would caution that by saying that this is about so much more than just taking communion on Sunday mornings with our fellow siblings in Christ. It's continuing this idea of relationship. What God desires is that we are nourished and cared for and provided for by our God. Our relationship is fulfilled when we lean into what God has promised and hold on to the hope and presence that God draws us into. Now, for Jesus, when he talks about bread this week, there is kind of this switch that happens. When Jesus refers to what he gives as living bread, he's stressing the idea that this living bread is something that will continue on from this point, sustaining us. And we know that because, being the Greek nerd that I am, the word for living in Greek is actually in the present participle. What that means, for those who did not get to study Greek in seminary, is that it starts here in the present. This thing has happened here and now, but that it continues on for the foreseeable future. It is something that is always going to happen. It has implications that will continue on for the future. And so this isn't a one-time thing where Jesus is saying, all right, I give you this bread, and that, that will be it. I've provided dinner for you today. Instead, it's this promise where Jesus says, I will continually feed you and provide for you and care for you from this point on into the end of time. That is the promise that is being made for those listening to Jesus. And it stresses the importance of this nourishment, this bread that Jesus is giving. Now, for the people who are listening to Jesus this week, they would remember, as Jesus alludes to, that their ancestors tra traveled out into the wilderness and were provided manna to eat by God. They would recognize and understand the necessity of that bread. In Hebrew, actually, the word for bread is the same word as food. It is so important for them that they do not have a different word between food and bread. So when we realize this, we can see some of the implications for those listening. What Jesus is saying is that he wants to be in relationship with us. And that the relationship will continue to feed us and care for us and transform us. Meeting our basic needs, yes, hunger, but also so much more. This is the life and the promise that we are also witnessing today that are being made to Eli. That God desires a relationship with all his beloved people. And that today Eli is being welcomed into God's family. Into a new community claimed by our loving God. Now, as Eli grows in his faith, he'll join his family in receiving this communion and abiding in the presence of God forever. And that is a big part of what we celebrate and remind ourselves of each week. There is no place that we go where our God does not go with us. When we receive these gifts of God's grace, whether that is through water or communion or the word, we hear whispered to us again and again that we are God's children, that nothing can separate us from God, and that we are called to then live out this hope in the world, sharing this amazing news with all in need. Now we have some interesting readings for this week to go along with our John passage. We hear in Proverbs today that wisdom invites those who are foolish or those who are uneducated, depending on your translation, 
into the feast that she has prepared. And that by dining together, those referred to as foolish will put away their immaturity or unknowingness and become more aware, realizing the path that they are called to be on. And I think that's a really good connecting piece between what it means to understand Jesus as the bread of life who wants to provide for us, and then how we go out and live our lives in the world. We need this relationship so that we can learn and grow and be guided along this right pathway. Wisdom will direct us as we struggle to live in community and as we follow this calling as disciples of Christ. We also hear in our Ephesians reading for this week what that looks like. This intentional living that we know the gifts of time and of community that has been given to us have deep repercussions on how we make decisions and how we care for those around us. If we know and recognize that we have limited time, then that should impact how our lives look. This might give us a new perspective around what we decide is necessary or important. How do we spend our time? Do we do that by doing justice or caring for those around us, letting people know that they are loved, or learning how to live and grow in community and seek this life-sustaining relationship with God? Or are we part of the group that sometimes needs to be awakened, as the author of Ephesians demands just in the verses prior to our passage for today? It says, wake up, <laughs> give thanks to God for all that God has done. Care for others and be wise with your time. Because as we'll hear as we welcome Eli into the family of God in just a bit here, we are co-workers in the kingdom of God. A kingdom that is here and now, not just someplace in the future. And so this week, as we continue to chew on what Jesus is saying, pun very much intended, uh, we realize that by eating this living bread, we are transformed and changed, following Christ's calling to go out to do the work that needs to be done, and to nourish others with the hope that we have found. So that this week, we give thanks to our God, who cares for us, loves us, and teaches us how to love one another as well. Amen. Amen. We'll now stand and sing our hymn of the day, and I will tell you that number, in the, hymn number 485.
the one body of Christ, anointed with the gift of the Holy Spirit, and joined in God's mission for the life of the world. And so, I would like family to
We give you thanks, O oh God, that through water and the Holy Spirit you give your children new birth, cleanse them from sin, and raise them to eternal life. Sustain Eli with the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your heart. as the beloved children that we are, and calm our anxiety or fear 
that we are feeling as we anticipate this election. Help us to show your love in the midst of disagreement or conflict. Merciful God, receive our prayer. prayer. We also pray this day for Eli, who has been baptized, and all those who are walking along this path with our God. Bless him and his family and sponsors as they continue to guide him along this pathway. Uh, merciful God, receive, receive our, our prayers. prayers. We lift up these prayers to you, gracious God. Receive them in your holy keeping. Amen. And now may the peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Please share that peace with one another as you are comfortable. Peace with you.
harmonious world of your creation, the plants and animals, the seas and stars, were whole and well in your praise. When sin had scarred the world, you sent your Son to heal our ills and to form us again into one. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord took the bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his acts of healing, his body given up, and his victory over death, we await that day when all the peoples of the earth will come to the river to enjoy the tree of life. Send your spirit upon us and upon this meal. As grain scattered on the hillside become one bread, so let your church be gathered from the ends of the earth, that all may be fed with the bread of life, your Son. Through him all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit, both now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now let us pray the prayer that our Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, and we forgive those who trespass against us, and we do not have the temptation, but deliver us from evil, for the time is beginning and the power of the glory forever and ever. Amen. All right, just a reminder, you'll come up from this side, then we'll go to this side. You'll come up, you can receive a cup there, come up and kneel or stand, and then return to your seats by the side aisle. If you want a blessing, that is more than fine as well. This is the table, not of the righteous, but of the poor in spirit. It is the table of sharing with the poor of the world with whom our Savior identified. It is the table of communion with the earth in which our Lord became incarnate. This is the table not of the church but of Jesus Christ. So come to this table, you who have much faith and you who would like to have more. You who have been here often and you who have not been here for a while or ever before. You who have tried to follow Jesus and you who have failed, come not because the church invites you. It is Christ who invites you to be known and fed here. Amen. Amen. We come. Come.